I really don't feel like I've ever taken Lake Tahoe for granted. Through skiing, I got to travel a ton and experience a lot of different places, particularly mountain towns. But there was something about Tahoe that always kept me coming back. People think of California, they don't necessarily think of mountainous regions with a lot of snow. This place is absolutely mind-blowing, and I want to share that. I want to show that Tahoe is epic, especially when it's on. That was crazy. That moved faster than I thought it was. The train is super special. It's very similar to BC in a lot of ways. It's been the perfect training ground, I think, for me. When the stars align, it's definitely been some of my favorite filming opportunities. or 15 years ago in Tahoe, that's when I was like first starting to get my first sponsors. I want to say I was 16 when I got my first real sponsor. And I remember the buzz that was Tahoe. Chasing JT Holmes and Ingrid Backstrom and Shane McConkey and Scott Gaffney, like all these names were such heroes of mine and they were all living in my hometown. Tahoe seemed to have high production. It was incredible to be a part of that, but then that kind of fizzled out. We're not getting as much snow down low as we used to. And I think that shifted people into basically not coming there to film. It's official. As of 2 p.m. today, we've reached 286 inches on the upper mountain, which means February of 2019 is now the snowiest month on record here. So I got that email on February 26. There's something to be said for adventure and seeing new places and traveling around and seeing new mountain ranges. What I appreciate the most is the time that I get to spend at home. When you pull off a strike mission at a moment's notice, you're usually not running with your typical crew. Into the mountains. The snow looked amazing last night in there, so I think Michelle could knock off a couple sick ones from the top. She's so rad to have out there. She picks out sick lines and get to watch her ride lines, and it, it helps me because I'm, I'm still learning about all this stuff out there, so it's pretty rad. Red and Brock are newer to big mountain ski or riding, and I almost called them skiers. <laughs> they are really respectful in the sense of wanting to learn and have a really solid knowledge foundation before approaching these mountains. And then you have Danny Davis, who's a seasoned veteran and who I consider to be maybe the most well-rounded snowboarder right now.
So from what I understand, Brock was, I want to say he was 18 years old and he was up in Whistler and it was his first really big opportunity to film with a major film company. He wasn't super aware of where he was on top of the mountain. And ended up on top of a massive cornice, which broke. I slid. 15 to 1800 feet. I was buried for, I think, four to six minutes or maybe seven minutes. I don't really know. I ended up breaking my back in three spots and they helied me out of there to the hospital for a couple days. And I feel like that was one of the biggest wake up calls I've ever had in my entire life. I can't believe it's already been like almost a year and a half out and Actually just got this new tattoo that says live for today because yesterday is over and tomorrow may never come and it's kind of what it comes down to. I feel super lucky that Brock's still around and that he's faced that challenge and turned it into something that I find to be quite beautiful. Massive cornices on both sides of me and there's like a little skinny pathway like right where my board's going, and the snow like blew in like super crazy up here on both sides. I think for him even probably standing in that location, you know, surrounded by giant cornices was, was pretty like facing your fears head on. Snow is absolutely amazing. And once you're on that next pad, it's actually quite flat. So you can scrub a little speed there if you wanted to before your next turn. And then you'll see a nice shoot. The snow looks really good. And yeah, there's kind of a nice pathway for your exit. Having Michelle help me through that line was probably one of the most special things I could ever have asked for. Like, a lot of people don't know what I went through, and there's some like serious PTSD going on up there. I knew Brock's capability in that moment, maybe more so than he knew it himself. And so I felt really confident and comfortable walking him into that line. Dropping in 10. Given our relationship, like older sister, little brother kind of a scenario, I was like, you've got this. Three, two, one, Brock dropping. Yeah, he laced it. I would have never expected him to kind of look to me for advice. That one line coming together was definitely like a culmination of us spending time together in the mountains, in the classroom, and just building that trust. And that was so cool. It was so cool to be a part of. That was psycho. <laughs> The probability of that ever happening, of me being with this crew of snowboarders, was really low. I wouldn't have seen it coming, and I probably wouldn't have thought to plan it out that way either. I would totally do it again. These are people that we go into the mountains with and we, you know, sit down at the dinner table and eat a meal with as well, and that's family to me.